Steve. Rob and Katie are about to leave. And... You gonna stand there and stare at an empty room or come downstairs and say goodbye to them? I'll be down in a minute, Charlie. All right. We'll only be down the block, Dad. Oh, hi, Kate. Well, I uh, guess they've got everything. Hmm? It looks so bare. Remember when Mr. Storkman built this room? The fights he and Uncle Charlie had? Anything you want, Mrs., you just tell me. Are we doing the right thing, Dad? No, of course not. Rob's out of school now, and the kids need a mother and father. Now the house full of uncles and grandfathers and Uncle Charlie's. You graduate from college, and you think everything is great, then you walk into a room and you find your wife in the arms of another man. <laughs> oh, boy. The room looks awful. Well, that's why I'm in the arms of another man. Where are the babies now? They're in the back seat of the car with Uncle Charlie. Well, we better get down there before he spoils little Charlie and gives the other two a complex. <laughs> It's gonna be weird around here without Robbie and Katie and the babies. Well, Robbie and Katie ought to be having dinner about now. No, I'd say uh, they're feeding the babies about now. Does somebody want to talk about something besides Robbie and Katie and the babies? Well, I can't get them off my mind. Besides, I forgot how to cook for just four people. <laughs> well, I uh, imagine Kate and Robert sitting down to dinner about now. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> oh. Do you like it? Great. I mean, the food. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, it seems like we should be having champagne or something for our first meal in our new apartment. Honey, the root beer's fine, and so is the canned tuna. <laughs> to us. To us. And to Dad. To Dad? Yeah. He's not happy. Sure he is. What do you mean? He's just surface happy. Oh, he has his house and his sons and Uncle Charlie and a good job. You're not doing your case any good with that kind of argument. Don't you see? When we were there, he had the, the babies to fuss over and he even had me to, to be masculine at when I screamed about spiders. What's he got now? No. No what? No, you're not going to match him up with some female. Well, she's not just some female, Rob. If you only knew how pretty and guilty you look. Okay, Katie, who is she and forget the whole thing? All I'm asking is that we invite Dad for dinner to meet her. Well, he can make up his own mind. Honey, he won't be making up his own mind. You'll be making up his mind. Who is she? Well, she's a friend of my mother's. And she's a widow. And she's pretty. And she's very bright. And her name is Millicent Sawyer. And... You've already asked her. <laughs> a week from Sunday. <laughs> to Katie Douglas, the meddler. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I keep tell you, Steve, tie your socks together before you throw them down the laundry chute. I thought I was doing that, Charlie. Yeah, well, somewhere between here and the watcher, they get separated. Well, I'll tie them tighter. 
Yeah, you keep saying that, but you don't do it. I got a whole basket full of socks that don't match. <laughs> is, uh, is something bothering you? Heck no. But you going over there for dinner and... Ah, forget it. Charlie, Katie just wants me to meet this woman, that's all. She's trying to get you married. Oh? I asked her and she said yes. You're supposed to be lonely and you need a wife. Her very words, Steve. Well, Charlie, would it be so terrible if I liked this woman? I mean, suppose I did get married again someday. Well, what happens to us around here? Well, nothing would change. I mean, she'd have to take me and you and the boys and tramp just the way we are. Well, <laughs> why didn't you say so? You, you, you better stick this in your pocket. And it wouldn't hurt to squirt another shot of this after shave on your jowls. Hey, now, wait a minute. Are you trying to marry me off? Sure, why not? <laughs> Dad, uh, could I see you? Well, Ernie, it's a little late. Uh, is it important? Yeah. I'm in a sort of a jam with this Mrs. Harper. What's a Mrs. Harper? <laughs> that substitute teacher. She sort of wants to talk to you, Dad, tomorrow after school. Well, Ernie, I'm sorry you didn't tell me about this sooner. I've got to go now, but uh, we'll discuss it at breakfast in the morning. Hmm? Where are you going? <laughs> Over to Robbie and Katie's to get married. <laughs> I didn't see you behind the door there. <laughs> Say, you really fixed the place up, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, I helped too, you know. Oh, I know that. Dad, I'd like you to meet Millicent. Oh. Millicent, this is my father-in-law, Steve Douglas. Millicent saw you, Dad. Well, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Douglas? Sit down. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, Mr. Douglas, would you mind sitting on my right? Light on the right, bereft on the left. Oh. Well, no, not at all. Dad, I'll, I'll get you something to drink. Yeah, well, thanks, Ron. Millicent was the only one who predicted triplets, Dad. Is that so? Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. You, uh, predicted triplets? Mm-hmm. You see, Kathleen has eight letters in it. Rob has three. Katie's maiden name, Miller, has six letters in it. Her married name has seven. Three from seven is five, six from seven is one, five and one are six, divided by two parents, which makes three. Yeah, I've always thought uh, three from seven is four. Oh, well, isn't that what I said? Well, possibly. And uh, Rob's full name is Robert. That's six letters. What sign were you born under, Mr. Douglas? Oh, I'm not sure. I... Uh, the birthday's the end of August. I guess that's, uh, that's Virgo, isn't it? That accounts for it. There's a streak of doubt in many Virgos. <laughs> Here you go, Dad. Oh, thanks, Rob. Is it too early to ask you to sit down? I'm afraid I mistimed the roast. Oh, that's all right, Kate. We'll uh, just bring these along. Uh, Dad, you sit at the head of the table. Uh, Millicent, over here, and Rob... Oh, Katie. Uh, you forgot. Light on the right. Uh, be reft on the left. <laughs> well, you better sit here. Oh, thank you. Oh, Dad. Oh, morning, Ern. Uh, about Mrs. Harper. We were supposed to talk about her at breakfast? Yes, I know, but I'm going to have to skip breakfast this morning. I rolled over and turned off the alarm, I guess. Uh, what about Mrs. Harper? Uh, you're supposed to be there about four. Be where? Mrs. Harper's room. 112. That's on the main floor near the water fountain. All right. But uh, what's the problem? Well, uh, Mrs. Harper teaches in one of those rooms where the desks aren't fastened to the floor. So the other day, I got the kids to change them all around. So we were facing backwards when she walked in. Well, uh, it seemed kind of funny at the time. 
And because it seems so funny, I have to go over there and straighten it out. Huh? Well, um, I think she wants to talk to you about something else, Dad. I, uh, came up with sort of an F on my last test. Hey, Steve, I forgot to ask you. How was that dame that Katie fixed you up with last night? Oh, uh, she seemed pleasant enough. Charlie, you're going to have to figure out some type of restriction for Ernie. He came up with sort of an F on a test. <laughs> I won't have breakfast this morning, Charlie. I'm late. See ya. Room 112, near the water fountain. Figured out any restrictions yet? How does the Chinese water torture strike you? <laughs> a lot, don't you think? Or are they just being polite? Well, uh, the little of both, I guess. Dad did seem to like her, don't you think? Katie, what is going on in that matchmaking head of yours? Nothing. Yes. Only we can't go to the concert Wednesday night, and I thought maybe Dad could use the tickets and take Millicent. Uh-huh. Well, let's leave that up to Dad. You know, I had a sheet of yellow paper with numbers on it. Hello? Oh, Millicent! How weird. Rob and I were just talking about you. No, it's not a bit too early. Oh, I, I see. Well, of course. No, no, I... I agree with you. Honesty is the only way. Thanks for calling. Who is that? Millicent. And? She doesn't care for Dad. She what? She says he's very nice. But she thinks that uh, his mind is closed on certain subjects. And besides, the number of letters in their names clash. Good. Goodbye. I'm looking for Mrs. Harper. Oh, well, I'm Barbara Harper. Oh. I'm Steve Douglas, uh, Ernie's father. Oh, yes. You're, uh, you're just leaving? Yes, I, uh, I have a little girl to get home to. Oh, I, I, I guess I am a little late. I'm sorry. I, uh, I got tied up. That's all right. Do you mind if we, uh, talk on the way to my car? No, no, that, that'd be fine. Uh, here, let me help you with those. No, thank you. Ernie uh, tells me he got uh, sort of an F in his last test. Well, uh, sort of. <laughs> of course, I, uh, I've never looked at it quite that way, Mrs. Harper. I guess I belong to the uh, wait and see what happens school of thought. Well, so do I, but, well, sometimes we don't have the luxury of time. Who was that man, for example, that you, uh, you mentioned earlier, the one who worked at your plant? Oh, you mean the test pilot, uh, Jeff Stevens? Well, now, now there's a man who, who can't wait and see. I mean, he has to react almost by instinct, wouldn't you say, Mr. Douglas? Well, not completely. We try to eliminate the human error factor as much as possible. If Dad got there at 4 o'clock, how come it's taken him so long to get home? They're just chopping you up kind of fine, that's all. <laughs> All I did was have a little fun and flunk one test. I got a feeling you should have passed the test and flunked the fun. <laughs> what could they be talking about all this time?
You know, in a way, I'm almost afraid to take that first trip to Europe. I anticipate too much. You've never been out of the country, have you? Oh, before my husband died, we had some crazy idea about hiding away on a Greek island, taking the baby for a couple of years, just the three of us. First time I went to Paris, the uh, company sent me. I spent the entire time at a drafting table in my hotel room. <laughs> Did you ever go back to Paris, I mean? Oh, yes, we went back once. Uh, I took the boys with me. Uh, waiter, check, please. Does your uh, mother still worry about you? Oh, don't they all? I guess so. You have your own uh, built-in babysitter, huh? She's wonderful with Dodie. I don't know what I'd do without her. Very lucky. You know, I know somebody who works at your plant. Uh, Mary Elliott. Uh, she's somebody's secretary. Maybe you've run into her. No, uh, I think I've heard the name, though. <sighs> what does it matter? Is it really true what you said earlier about mental fatigue? I mean, is that measurable? Oh, yes. Yes, it, uh, it varies with the alloys, but it's, uh, it's a factor that all of us take into account. Rob? Huh? Suppose Dad calls Millicent for a date. Yeah, he might call her. So what? Well, so she'd turn him down. And then he'd be hurt. I don't think Dad is that thin-skinned. Good night. to tell a woman the very same thing if she doesn't stop talking. Poor Dad. Good night. Well, I'm not sure I'd put it quite that way, Barbara, but uh, I think you're right about too much psychology and not enough common sense. Exactly, Steve. You know, I find myself explaining things to Dodie, who, after all, is only a baby, as if she were a college professor. I mean, I think it's a good idea to give them the reason for punishment, but I think we've become much too permissive in our society. I think your Uncle Charlie has the right idea. Well, of course, I'm not uh, sure Uncle Charlie is too familiar with Freud. <laughs> Did he really tell Chip's guitar teacher that he looked like a chipmunk? Oh, sure. He also advised the poor guy to get into a fight and have somebody knock his teeth out so he could start all over again. And then he offered to be the one to do it. You know, that's terrible. But it's funny. After all, he was picking on Chip. <laughs> You. What are you doing stomping around the kitchen this time of the night? I was just looking to see if Dad's car was in the driveway. He's not home yet. Since when is he on a curfew? I keep wondering what he and Mrs. Harper said about me. Oh, oh. well, they'll probably have you guillotined in the morning. <laughs> They've been talking about me all this time. I'm gonna get creamed real good. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Hi. Sarah, it's uh, kind of late. What are you doing up? Alice Ledfoot here. We're just checking to see if you was home. Oh. Did you talk to Mrs. Harper? Yes, I had dinner with her. Man. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I just left her. And now look, Steve, just because the kid turned a few chairs around and flunked a little bit doesn't mean you have to go and have a peace conference about it. What did she say? About what, Ernie? About me. Oh. <laughs> Come to think of it, we never got around to you. <laughs> Come on, it's late. Get up to bed. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Uncle 
Well, Charlie said Dad didn't even talk to her about you. Yeah. And then all she said to you in school today was bone up a little? Well, she said more than that. She said, with my background, I had to be ashamed of myself. What background? I think she meant Dad. Hi, you guys. Hi, Roy. Hi. Who's watching the kids? Katie's aunt. Say, is Dad home? And if he is, would you mind getting lost? Katie would like to talk to him privately. Well, what about him? If they told you that, it wouldn't be private. <laughs> He's upstairs, Rob, and we ought to be up there doing our homework, Ernie. Well, I'd rather do my homework down here. What do you want him to do? Draw you a picture? I'll tell him you're here. Thanks. How do you tell a man like Dad that somebody doesn't like him? Easy. You just don't open your mouth. Well, he's going to find out as soon as he asks her for a date. Katie, number one, if I know Dad, he won't even remember her name. And number two, if he called her, what makes you think that you would do a better job of letting him down than she would? I don't know. Hi, Kate. Rob. Hi, Dad. The uh, boy said you wanted to see me. Uh, yeah, in a way. Oh, before I forget, uh, Uncle Charlie tells me you have a couple of tickets to a concert tomorrow night that you won't be using. I didn't know you were that crazy about concerts. <laughs> well, Kate, it, uh, it all depends upon who you go with. Yeah, I, uh... I have them right here, Dad. Oh, good. Uh, say, uh, before I take them, I better, uh, better do a little checking. I mean, if she can't go, why, you, you can give them to somebody else. Don't be surprised if she can't. Hello, Barbara. This is Steve. Barbara? <laughs> say, uh, I have a chance to uh, get a couple of tickets for a concert tomorrow night. Do you think you'd be able to go? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, tell me, uh, how was your day? I don't know why we're making such a big deal out of it. Dad's been out with lots of women. Not like this. He's only known her two days, and I'll bet he's called her 40 times. Listen to you gossiping like a couple of old ladies. Now, Dad's found someone he likes, and I think it's wonderful. Mm. Honey, we better get going home. Well, don't go marrying him off so fast. Uncle Charlie, tell Dad goodbye for us. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, hey, Kate, Rob, you're not leaving. Yeah, they figured the babies would be shaving by the time you got off the phone. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but, Kate, wasn't there something you wanted to tell me? Not anymore. Hello? Sure, Barbara. Surprise for you. <laughs> Something she forgot to mention. Hi. <laughs> I guess we didn't get around to that, did we? Well, I'll pick you up around 7 o'clock tomorrow. Tell her I think it's wonderful. See, I've got a better idea. Why don't I pick you up around 6 and we can have dinner at the music center? There he goes again. <laughs> well, I think it's... Yeah, we know. You think it's wonderful. <laughs> so long, Uncle Charlie. Bye. Good night. Yeah, I looked down on the mall in the... Oh, a couple of blocks. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I don't think I remember that. Ian, so you won't starve to death. Good night. <laughs> you see Charlie and the boys... Are... Charlie reacts faster than the other two. Yeah, we noticed Uncle Charlie. <laughs> He's not home yet. Did Dad say where they were going after the golf lesson? Nope. What's so important about reaching him? Well, in a way, I, I don't like the idea of just showing up as an employee at the plant where he works without at least talking to him about it. You've decided on the offer you're going to take? Yeah, just about. I, I think you ought to be in on the decision, though. Uh, so he can put a good word in for you? Just the opposite. Rob doesn't believe in nepotism. Me too. I never touched the stuff. <laughs> now, 
Uncle Charlie. Dinner's almost ready. Hey, come on, let's get you in with your brothers, okay? Hey, and let me eat Oh, it's getting so big. Uncle Charlie, uh, where do they usually have dinner? Who? Your dad or Mrs. Harper. Mrs. Harper? <laughs> He hasn't called her Mrs. Harper for two weeks. It's Barbara this and Barbara that. Do they have a favorite place to eat? Well, he keeps talking about Mama's Lasagna Palace down on 12th and Filbert. Oh, good, thanks. That must be Little Charlie. Oh, Mr. Douglas, Senora, welcome to come. I have you your favorite table. Signora. Thank you. Cesare will come to the table to play for you. Something with romance. Cesare! <laughs> we haven't even ordered yet. One thing about Mama Rosini. She's subtle. Oh, <laughs> Play, Cesare, play. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, he's here. Un momento. Oh, uh, it's for you, Mr. Douglas. Oh. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, who is this? Oh, hi, Rob. Dad, I'm sorry to bother you there. What's that? Uh, oh, you, uh, you mean the music? Uh, well, we're being played at two. <laughs> Uh, what were you saying, Ron? Well, I, I've been trying to reach you, and... Uh, Dad, I, I'm thinking of going to work in your plant, and uh, I, I think we should talk about it. Well, that, that's fine. Th that we should talk about it? Well, did you want to come to work at the plant? Uh, Cesare, that's, that's, that's very nice, but uh, would you mind holding it down a little? Uh, I'll tell you, Rob, I'll call Bob Anderson. No, Dad, that, that's the whole hey, point. Come on, you and Katie, you gotta watch out with them safety pins. Poor little fella got a sit down stuck by a safety pin floor. <laughs> there was little Charlie. What's wrong with little Charlie? Uh, Cesare, Mr. Douglas is trying to talk. Do you think you could play a little later? Grazie. <laughs> working out very well. Uh, why don't you try to come by the house tomorrow? Okay. All right. Goodbye. That's <laughs> it. Is anything wrong, Steve? <laughs> no. Nothing that a nice, clear conversation without music won't cure. <laughs> Overlap with a little okay. finger, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. All well, right. Try it again. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, that's, uh, that's not too bad. Uh, Shouldn't uh, I at least hit the grass? Oh, no, you will. You will. Now, uh, you just came up on the shot a little bit. Get the hand. All right. Now, remember, keep your head still. All right. Now, to keep my head down. All right. Draw the club back slowly. All right. Keep your head down. Okay. And follow through. Oh. You hit the grass that time. <laughs> yeah. And you just oh. duck into it a little bit. Here, let me get you. All right. Get the hands right. Got right. your grip? Yes. Now take the club take straight away from the ball. Straight right. away. Turn, turn, turn. 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 And let the wrist break at the top. Is the pupil supposed to enjoy the lesson this much? Well, that's that's tradition. <laughs> now, come on. Keep your eye on the ball. There is no ball. Well, pretend there's a ball. Okay? Okay. Down, down, now down under. under. Let the right knee break in. All right. Through. <laughs> ball. Finish high. Finish and high. High. <laughs> I lost my
my gallery. <laughs> it happens to the best of them. Now, come on, let's try it again. Steve, I think I'm going to love golf. I'll tell you, why don't we go over to the practice range where you can really hit some balls? All right. I've got something that'll help your swing. I don't think anything will help my swing. Oh, Steve, <laughs> you should have. I uh, called your mother and got oh, some size. Oh, that's perfect. I'd have to soften them up a little bit. Oh, come on. Climb in. Charlie, we're going over to the driving range for a while. Too bad you can't stay a little longer. I wouldn't have to cut the grass. <laughs> oh, how about dinner? I'll check with you. Uncle Charlie? Say, uh, was that Dad who just drove off? It wasn't sitting full. Are they coming back? Ah, uh, who knows? Hi, you guys. <laughs> But didn't he remember we were supposed to have a talk? Oh, he don't remember nothing nowadays. Hey, uh, you're gonna have to get a truck for these little guys. They're growing out of this thing. Yeah. Did Dad say anything about coming back for dinner? He said he'd check with me later. Hey, Rob, I think this is the woman Dad's been waiting for. Oh, you can say that again. Why not? Five minutes ago, he gave her a gift. A gift? Yeah, and she squealed like he handed her to Taj Mahal. What was it, Uncle Charlie? A, a pendant? Nope. A, a locket? Nope. A ring? Better than that, a pair of golf shoes. <laughs> Ain't that touching? <laughs> conversation with the grasshopper. Well, Rob, it's Dad. Say, I'm sorry about today, but you didn't say what time, and... Well, no, Rob, I, uh, I'm already late for a dinner with Barbara. Hey, I've got an idea. Have you and Katie had dinner yet? Well, tell her to put it back in the freezer, and Uncle Charlie will come over and babysit, and you and Katie have dinner with Barbara and me. Come on, hold the phone, Steve. I didn't say I'd babysit any kids. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. Uh, will you? Well, sure. <laughs> it's better than sitting here listening to the crickets. He said fine. Oh, the same restaurant, you know, the one where you called the other night. You are for Mr. Douglas, no? Yes. <laughs> he described you to me. This way, please. Thank you. Oh, here they are. Hi, Kate. Hi. Rob. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi. Barbara, this is Katie and Rob. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Harper. Oh, call me Barbara, please. Thank you. Que bella. Cesare. Fettuccini tonight. Mm. Oh, good. Cesare. Dad has told us so much about you, I feel like we're old friends. I think I would have known you from his description. You are that pretty. Well, I've seen pictures of you and the babies. What a nice family. Thank you. Dad. Barbara, do you mind if I talk family stuff in front of you? These days, we don't get to see much of Dad alone. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed you today, Rob, but uh, Barbara and I got involved in a little golf. Mm, how did you do? Oh, I, uh... Well, I, I don't dig up the grass anymore, but I'm a little rough on those mats they use for tees. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, she did pretty well. <laughs> Dad. Dad, I... <laughs> That's the song Jezere played the first time we were here. And now he thinks it's uh, our song. <laughs> no wonder you and Barbara come here so often. The food is great. Well, it's a kind of special place for us. Dad, uh, are you getting the picture? I mean, about me working at your plant? Oh, sure. I'll talk to Bob Anderson first chance I get. No, that's just the point. I, I don't want you to talk to Mr. Anderson. Well, let me warn you. Whether I talk to him or not, Bob Anderson's a pretty rough customer. I mean, he'll have you working in the stock room or sweeping out or something. He believes in starting at the bottom. Well, that's fine. But I don't want to put you on the spot because of nepotism. And I don't want to put myself on the spot either. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. I'll tell your fortune, yes? Well, you suppose you could wait a minute, please? It's free, don't worry. Cut. <laughs> The love card. You see how quick comes up the love card? The travel card? You see? Uh, no, I don't. The ring card. Oh. Somebody is going to give to somebody else a ring. And the ring card, together with the travel card, makes for two people. A honeymoon. <laughs> Cesare, I bring espresso coffee. We have a little celebration. Anyway, Dad, I guess what I've been trying to say... Steve? Well, I don't know. You know, pride's such a silly thing. Bob Anderson wouldn't hire Rob just because I asked him to. Do you mind if I uh, interfere in something for the first time since I've known you? No, oh, please do. Well, it's very important to Robbie. I mean, he called last night. He, he came over today. He finally joined us at dinner. What I'm trying to say is... He wants to get this job on his own. I know that. But if Anderson comes to me with a direct question about him, I... Uh, well, I can't very well hide the fact that Rob's a pretty darn good stress engineer. Taught me a couple of things, as a matter of fact. You're proud of him, aren't you? Oh, sure. He's a bright boy. Plan to be very lucky to get him. That's why I say I can't be sure what I'll do if Anderson comes to me about him. Okay, you're right. I'll stay out of it. Well. <laughs> That's my mother. She's being subtle. I, uh, I approve of her methods. Steve, you... Well, I, I think you know me well enough to know I'm not devious. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, well, my mother with the porch light and... Cesare with the love music, Mama Rosini with the fortune telling. I wouldn't want you to think that I arranged it. Well, now that you mention it, it does seem a little odd. <laughs> I mean, why would Mama Rosini pick tonight to tell you fortune? And this business with a porch light. See, that's carrying it a little far. Uh, Stephen Douglas, you're a rat. <laughs> hey, you're right. Hi, sweetheart. You all ready for school? Yeah. Can I walk with Kathy Wagner to school? Hmm. I suppose so. I don't have to tell you about being careful of the traffic when you cross the street, do I? No. Can Kathy Wagner stay overnight if her mother says okay? Hmm. I guess so. I'm not working this week, so I'll be home. Can I relax to make over ice cream? Mm-hmm. I'll get it out of my purse. Is that being permitted this morning, Dodie Hopper? Gosh, yeah, Grandma. Oh. Is Mama feeling okay? Well, I think so, darling. Why do you ask? Well, I got a nickel, and Kathy Wagner gets to stay over all night. Well, just count your blessings, child. <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. Be a good girl. Bye, Grandma. Don't he ask me if you were ill. Ill? Well, it seems she got a nickel and a few other unexpected benefits this morning. Shall I ask you something straight out? No, but you will. Correct. What is it?
Are you in love with Stephen Douglas? Oh, Mother, what a question. And that is not an answer. Are you? Well, I like him. I mean, you might even say I like him very much, but nobody said one thing about love. I didn't ask you if anybody said anything about love. I asked you if you were in love with him. Oh, Mother, how could I possibly know? I mean, you go out with a man a few times, and you, well, you talk a lot and laugh, and... After all, he's got his family and his life, and I've got mine. As a matter of fact, he's very undecided about what to do with his son. You see, Robbie wants to work at Steve's plant, and he... Has he kissed you yet? <sighs> Mother, you really are something. Okay, I'm something. Has he? No. Yes, Mr. Anderson. I'll tell Mr. Douglas the minute he gets in. Fine. Well, good morning. Morning, Janice. Mr. Anderson just called Mr. Douglas. He wondered if you'd be free before lunch. That'll be fine. Uh, Janice, uh, what do you know about Miss Corb down at personnel? Margaret Corb? I guess so, yeah. Oh, she's the worst. Worse than what? Well, I mean, she's tough, and she's thorough, and she's... Well, she's almost ruthless in her zeal to get only the best people for the company. I think she had an unfortunate marriage. Well, uh, thank you, Janice. Why are you hanging around the phone, dear? I'm not hanging around the phone. Oh, sorry. I thought you were. Uh, but if you were hanging around the phone, what would you be hanging around it for? Well, I... Uh, I'm just concerned about Steve. He said he'd call me if Robbie got the job and the interview must be over by now. And Well, it... It just means so much to Steve. What was that for? Oh, I always do that to a daughter who's not in love. <laughs> Janice, uh, Mr. Anderson did say before lunch, didn't he? Yes, something must have happened. Yeah, I must have. May I go to lunch, Mr. Douglas? Yeah, you run along, Janice. All right, then. I'll stick around for a few more minutes. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Hello, Janice. Oh, hi, Bob. Hi, Steve. Sorry I'm so late, but somebody came up. Oh, that's right. Come on in. No, 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 thanks. What I have to say won't take too long. Steve, how much emphasis was put on mental fatigue and stress when you were a young guy going to school? Oh, well, some, but uh, nothing to what they're doing these days. As a matter of fact, my son... Your son what? It's not important, Bob. Uh, why did you ask about mental fatigue? Because I'm not sure the young fellows coming up are as well grounded on the subject as they should be. Oh, but they are. Of course, the lab work they do these days isn't... Uh... Steve, are you trying to tell me something? No, no. Uh, nothing you don't already know. Steve, do you know any good young metal engineers? No, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, Bob. Uh, on second thought, yes, I do. But on, uh, on third thought, no, I don't. Thanks, anyway. Bob, wait a minute. I do know a good metal stress man. Now, he happens to be my son, and I promise... Your I... son? Is that the Douglas we hired today? You, uh, you hired him? Sure. I gave him to that young dragon downstairs, Miss Corb. She recommended him so highly that I interviewed him myself. That's why I was late. You, uh, you hired him, huh? Yes. He's working in Building A. Why don't you go over and see him? Yeah, I'll do that. 
Well, Bob, I'm very pleased. But you got yourself a good man. Uh, tell me, uh, why did you ask me if I knew any good young metal stress engineers? Because we need a couple more just like your boy. Oh. Uh, where did you uh, start it, Bob? In the stock room? Stock room? Robert Douglas? Well, that's where you usually start new young men. Not the outstanding ones. We have to bid for them. Outstanding, huh? Well. Oh, pardon me. That's my son. <laughs> Hi. Yes, sir. Is Robbie, uh, I mean, uh, is Robert Douglas in? Whom should I say is calling, sir? Stephen Douglas. I was father. I wonder what's keeping Rob and Katie. He's probably busy running the plant. He's been on the job a whole day. <laughs> I bet he forgot about the time and the excitement of telling Katie about it. Mr. Douglas, a disaster. Oh? Cesare does not know how to play happy occupation to you, for she's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> Which has something with an upbeat, Mama. It's the spirit that counts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Say, you guys want to hear a great postcard from Chip? Are they still on that camping? Yeah. Get a load of this. Dear Dad and everybody, Artie's poison oak is getting better. Love, Chip. Yeah. Well, you got poison oak, huh? He must have thought he told us about it. But it's getting better. <laughs> and I've got my own office with my own name on it and my own secretary. You told me. You told me. Oh. Well, hi. Hi. Right this way, please. Oh, here we are. Hey, hi, Dad. Hi. Welcome, Charlie. Hi, Barbara. How are you? How are you? Good. So, this is the boy that drives to the train. Oh, he's, uh, he's not that kind of an engineer. Oh. Uh, oh, surprise. Uh, boy. Congratulations, Rob. Happy Occupazione, Roberto. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Are we go now in case somebody wants to cry? <laughs> well, at least with a pizza, you don't have to blow out the candle. That's right. Did you make a wish? On a pizza? That's a ridiculous. <laughs> and not too much for me. I don't want to get too fat too quick. You guys ever hear about the dame that... Uncle Charlie. Oh, uh, breadsticks, anyone? <laughs> oh, yeah. Shower, they're just murder. <laughs> yeah, same thing happened to me last week. Boy, Dad sure is blowing the whole scene with that lady. What lady? Your substitute teacher. He's telling her how the freeways are murdered. <laughs> Real clever stuff like that. Uh, she's not my substitute teacher anymore. Mrs. Pignatelli came back from busting her knee. Well, that's not the point, Ernie. Well, the thing is, if you like a girl, you don't talk about how freeways are murder and advertising like he does. How do you know he likes her? Have you ever heard him talk on the phone day and night like he does with her? How could he like her? She's a teacher. <laughs> no, Ernie, sometimes it's a real strain waiting for you to grow up. <laughs> I wonder if I ought to have a little talk with Dad. Honey, all I'm saying is that if he keeps talking about lawn fertilizer and plumbing with her when he takes her out, 
He's not going to get to first base. As a clinical thought, what is first base? You know, I've never seen him so interested in a woman. You're not answering my question. What is first base? Oh, I don't know. Uh, holding hands, a goodnight kiss. Why ask such a weird question? Just protecting myself in case we have a daughter. Oh. Well, number one, I'm sure that Dad likes Barbara Harper. Number two, he's taken her out a lot of times. And number three, somebody better talk to him. You know, Rob, your father is a grown man. And he's lived a lot longer than you have. And somewhere along the line, he asked your mother to marry him. I don't think he needs any coaching. Katie, that was years ago. Have you heard him talk to Mrs. Harper on the phone? Uh, yes. Uh, they don't worry too much about soil erosion in that part of the country. As a matter of fact, 40% of their problem is lack of rainfall. If he keeps that up, not only won't he get to first base, he'll never make it up to bat. All I'm saying is quit talking about how they drive on the left side in England and start saying stuff like uh, she's got swell lips or something. Swell lips? I think Barbara's pretty good looking. Well, so do I, Charlie, but... Then tell her so. Tell her how you've never seen eyes like hers before and that you nearly black out every time you think about her shoulders. I'll uh, see you later, Charlie. No, now, wait a minute, Steve. Look, I've sailed from Vancouver to Macau, and I've never heard of a guy winning a girl by saying, we got three-quarter-inch pipe in our bathroom. <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, Dad? Yes, you... Are you going out with Mrs. Harper? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, uh, well, a couple of times, I... Well, I couldn't help over here and you talked to her on the phone. Well, that's all right, Chip. We have no secrets. Oh, I know that. I mean... <laughs> well, where are you going tonight? Well, we thought we'd go to that little restaurant we like. Oh, what did you want, Chip? I didn't want anything. Well, what I mean is... If you like somebody... You ought to tell him something, you know, personal once in a while. What I mean is, you've been telling her about those dead spots in the lawn. Now you have to fertilize them with bone meal. She was having the same trouble with her lawn. <laughs> well, yeah? Yeah. Have a good time, Dad. Thank you. Well, did you tell him? I tried to. He just looked at me. I guess it's easier to ask parents stuff than to tell them anything. <laughs> hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Rob. You going out? Yeah, we're just going out to dinner. Well, what uh, brings you over our way? Oh, well, uh, we ate early, so it was either take a walk or go to sleep on the couch. Uh, dinner, huh? Yeah, dinner. Mm. With Barbara? With Barbara. Dad, uh, I know this is none of my business, but uh, you like her, don't you? Yes, I, uh, I like her. Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, when a man... L let me put it another way. <laughs> Dad, uh, I guess what I'm really trying to say is that, uh, well, maybe now is the time to stop talking about soil erosion. <laughs> Uh, are you hacked at me for, for saying all this? No, 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 of course not, Rob. You want me to tell her she has swell lips? <laughs> I thought that... Swell lips? That's one of Charlie's suggestions. <laughs> Have a good time, Dad. Thanks, Rob. Good night. Good night. You've been talking to him, too, huh? You, too, I hear. Yeah, and so is Chip. You know, he just sort of looks at you and lets you fonder on the rocks. <laughs> I'm not so sure, Uncle Charlie. If I know Dad, he's doing a lot of thinking about now. Steve, you wouldn't believe the difference in attitude the minute the children knew that I was in on the trick. <laughs> Mr. Douglas, Senora. Hello, Mama. It's so nice to see you again. You want the same booth? Oh, that'll be fine, thanks. I'll have to try to remember some of the tricks the boys played on their teachers. It uh, might put you a little ahead of the game. I want you to do that. I bring a menu. Oh, thank you. Well, how was your day? That was fine. Oh, say, I, uh, I ran into that fellow that just had his car painted. 
And uh, he said it'd be a good idea if you could get it in the night before. If you... You, uh, you like the fortune I tell you the other night? Oh, yes. yes. It, was, uh, it was fine, Mama. Now, let's see. You remember the love cards say a trip and a ring? The cards never lie. What were you saying? About what? About, uh, uh, about having my car painted? Oh. Well, I, uh, I was saying that, uh, this fellow said you should get the car into the shop the night before, and that way some early bird wouldn't beat you out. It's a good idea. I mean, uh, if I decide to have it painted. Of course, uh, Maybe one of those $12 wax shops would be all you'd need. Hmm, maybe. I mean, all you see is the hood when you're driving. Yeah, that's right. Does it play something romantic? <laughs> some pie left. I thought the boys might want some. Mm. And besides, you can find out a little more about the romance of the century if you go over there and hang around. <laughs> no, really. I, it's a shame to see that pie go to waste. You know, he told me not to butt in and look at you. Well, I didn't say not to butt in. I told you not to give him advice. <laughs> well, the logic of that completely escapes me. <laughs> I won't be gone long. Hey. You forgot the pie. kill the next kid that puts half-eaten ice cream cones in the ice box. Did you ever clean out a swamp? All the time. Uh, how's everything over here? Oh, the usual bumps and bruises. How's Dad? Why don't you ask him? He's here? On a Friday night? He's in the living room, pretending to read a book. Well, I have something here that will make him very happy he stayed home tonight. Oh, hi, Kate. I brought you some pie. Oh, wonderful. Apple, huh? Mm-hmm. How are Rob and the boys? Okay. Little Charlie bumped his head on the corner of the playpen. But they were all three crying at the time, and we couldn't tell which one was hurt until the lump showed up. Well, he's all right now, huh? He's fine. Oh, good. How's the pie? Well, I haven't tasted it yet. It looks great. I made it myself. Well, anyway, I thawed it out. Oh. How's Barbara? Well, she's, uh, she's fine, I suppose. Oh, don't tell me you two had a spat. Oh, no, nothing like that. Uh, just that, uh... Dad, I know I shouldn't say this. But it's Friday night, and, and you're just sitting here. I'm sorry. Kate, uh, are you suggesting that I get married? I only know you're very fond of her. And when she looks at you, 
Anyway, what's so wrong with marriage? I recommend it highly. Well, it's a big step for me, Kate. I mean, there's Charlie and the boys to think of. Until last night, I, uh, I guess the subject was sort of buried in our subconscious. Well, maybe now's the time to think about it openly. Well, Katie, uh, I must say that uh, when you thaw out a pie, you do a good job. It's, uh, it's very tasty. Okay, Dad. I'll drop it. But don't be surprised if I bring it up again tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty soon, young lady, you're going to have to stop wearing pajamas and get into pretty, frilly nightgowns. Susan has to wear nightgowns, too, and her bottom gets cold. <laughs> Hello. No, this is 7063. Not at all. Oh. Say goodnight, Doody. Good night. Mommy, are you going anywhere tonight? No, I guess not. Hey, Nate, you can tell Myrtle and me a story. All right. Why don't you let Myrtle sleep by herself once in a while? She looks kind of dead off my arm. <laughs> oh. All right. Good night, Pumpkin. I'll be in soon. Good night, Mommy. Mommy's going to tell us a story. She says, neat. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, Barbara. You can't expect a man to call every night. Oh, I don't. Well, then why do you shoot into the room every time the phone rings? I don't shoot into the room. Let's change the subject, shall we? What'd you do, have a fight? No, it's nothing like that. It's just that... Did I tell you that I'm teaching at the Buchanan Street Elementary School on Monday? Only three times. Why don't you call him? Mother, I... I've lived a long time without Stephen Douglas. You have some kind of a fixation on the subject now. Hello? No, you're misdialing. You're very welcome. I was wrong, dear. You don't shoot into the room. You catapult. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Where are you going? Well, I thought I'd go over to the house and use Uncle Charlie's machine. What's wrong with the machine here at the apartment house? Uh, well, uh, half the time you have to wait for other people, and I keep running out of quarters. Look, honey, I butted in, and then you butted in, and neither one of us accomplished a thing. No, really? Now, Katie, I, I know that sneaky look of yours. Look, let, let's leave Dad alone. To quote a woman I know, he's a grown man, and he doesn't need anybody to coach him. Well, Rob, somebody has to butt in and save that relationship. Well, maybe, but not us. <laughs> Why don't you pick up the phone and call him? My generation doesn't call up men. I had a mother who made a strong point of it. Yes, but the old fool has changed her mind. <laughs> Wouldn't you think they'd give you a little more material to let out of him more than once? Mm -hmm. Teacher's daughter should not say me and Myrtle. Oh, well. We might as well do the shopping now. Come on. We, uh, we won't be long. Oh, take your time, dear. I have a program I want to see. Okay. Come on, love. Hey, Steve, why don't you go down to the driving range and knock out a couple of buckets of balls so I can get my work done around here? Oh, it's a little too crowded on Saturday, Charlie. 
Well, it's too crowded around here, too. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is Steve Douglas. Well, this is Barbara Harper's mother, Mr. Douglas. Oh, yes, Mrs. Vincent. Barbara isn't here, and I just wondered if she might be over at your place. Well, no, she's not here. I'm a little worried about her. Worried? Uh, well, has she been gone long? Uh, come to think of it, no. Oh, I'm sure she must be at the market or something. Well, didn't she say where she was going? Oh, you must forgive an old woman for making a big problem out of a little one, Mr. Douglas. Now that I think back, I'm sure she said she was going to the market. It's just that uh, I feel so helpless here without a car in case she doesn't get back. Oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you, Mrs. Vincent, don't you worry. I'll, I'll come right over. Yes. Yeah. sure where you were, so I came on over. Uh, here, let me take that. She wasn't sure. Uh, Dodie, I'd like you to meet Mr. Douglas. Steve, this is my daughter, Dodie. Well, hello, Dodie. Hello, mister. This is Myrtle. <laughs> well, I'm very happy to meet you, Myrtle. I, uh, I'll, uh, just take these groceries. Thank you. <laughs> Dodie, come along with me. Did, uh, did Mother call you? Yes, and she sounded a little worried, so I came over. Well, I hope she didn't take you away from anything important. Oh, no. no I was just having a cup of coffee with Charlie. <sighs> Steve, my mother knew where I was all the time. She was just interfering. Oh. I'm sorry. Thank you for coming over. Barbara. I baked this cake this morning, Mr. Douglas. I thought you and the boys might enjoy it. Well, that's very nice of you. Thank you, Mrs. Vincent. Uh, Barbara, Dodie is playing next door, and I'm going to take a nap. Why don't you and Mr. Douglas go for a little ride? It's so nice out. Am I there? Only to his house to drop off the cake, dear. I understand you have three boys, Mr. Douglas. Yes, that's right. Barbara loves boys. <laughs> well, shall we? Steve, I can't imagine what you think. I think we ought to take the cake home and feed it to the boys. Okay, Renee, I'm in the clear. Let me have a up. Hey, come on. What is this, elephant time? <laughs> There's Danny's with the lady. Hey, that's Mrs. Harper. Mrs. Harper? Come on, you guys, get lost. How come? Because there's going to be a lot of introductions, and with you guys hanging around, they won't act natural. And I want to see which way the romance crumbles. <laughs> hey, Uncle Charlie, she already knows me. She was my substitute teacher. Okay, now, come on, okay, upstairs, upstairs, come on, up, 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 up. <laughs> Say, I wanted to ask you before, did you ever have any lady relatives who danced in the Orient? Well, not that I know of. Well, that's funny because you're a dead ringer for a girl who used to be the head belly dancer at Fat Sam's. Charlie, uh, Barbara's mother baked this cake for us. Where are the boys? Oh, uh, they got lost somewhere. <laughs> what are you two gonna do? Well, we, uh, we haven't thought about it. Oh, well, I'd ask you to stay for dinner, only uh, I got a lodge meeting tonight, and uh, the boys are going to eat out, too. Well, I, I didn't expect to stay for dinner. Well, here's what I think you two ought to do. Uh, go to the Italian place for dinner, 
and then uh, maybe take in a movie, and then drive down to the beach and watch the waves. <laughs> uh, Charlie, why don't you take the cake out in the kitchen, huh? Mm. Oh, and it's no use going over to Robbie and Katie's because they, they went fishing somewhere and uh, the babies are in Glendale. <laughs> it looks like you're stuck with him. Of course, you know that whole thing was a pack of lies. I think it is much. But you know, I have an idea. Why don't we uh, go to the Italian restaurant and then uh, maybe take in a movie? And after that, uh, drive down to the beach and watch the waves. Charlie's right. I'm stuck with you. <laughs> I like the smell of a pipe. It must come in handy. I mean, if you don't feel like talking, you just draw on your pipe. Did you uh, enjoy the dinner? And the beach. And the waves. Barbara. I. I was wondering. What did you decide to do about the car? <laughs> to have it waxed, <laughs> like you say. Doody, what are you doing out of bed at this hour? Watching Mommy and Mr. Douglas. Well, how can you see them from there? Porch light. Oh. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid it's getting a little late. Steve. Huh? That's my mother. She's being subtle again. No, Barbara, I've been thinking. Yes? Well, I've been wrong. About what? About the price of the wax job. <laughs> now, for a car the size of yours, I think it's going to come Steve. to around 14. If you don't make a move pretty soon, I will. You will. I will. 